I'm thankful, man. I'm thankful. Say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And so starting off tonight, you know, uh, the, the first thing I want to let you know is, is that you got to always be feeding on God's word. You know, it, it comes to a point to where we can't let the word of God, not in today's, you know, society and culture, you know, come to nothing. Amen. We got to constantly be feeding on the word of God yes. and not just feeding on the word, but feasting yes. on the word. It's a difference between when you're feeding and when you're feasting. Yes. You know, when, you, when you're just feeding, you're getting something just, just so you had just enough. But when you're feasting, you know, you got more than enough. I'm, 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 I'm in my word even when I don't need to be in my word, even when there's not a cause for me to be in my word right now. But I'm constantly feeding on his word and feasting on his word because I know that this word is the thing that's going to be able to hold me in any time. You know, no matter how dark of the times get, you know, no matter if we're in the last days, the, you know, the, the prerequisite for the last days, you know, the, the, the last day, the last day, whatever the days may be, I got to always be feasting on God's word. Because it's, it's that word that really, you know, fills me and fuels me to be able to go out in this life. Amen. You know, a lot of times you, you, you find yourself, you know, trying to do some things, but without the word, you just don't even have the energy that's necessary to be able to do it. Amen. Like the word is supposed to be our, um, our energy boost. Even when a time that, you know, I don't know where I'm at right now, I ought to be able to go into God's word and start peeling that word back, you know, and get, and get, and get some things out of that word to be able to really project me forward. So now, whatever's going on, say, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. So now, I'm, I'm no longer just, just, just going by regular, but there's a certain, you know, uh, two words I want you to get tonight, confidence and boldness. Yes. There's a certain confidence and a certain boldness that you got to wear. Yes. You really got to be a supernatural confidence Amen. and a supernatural boldness that you got to wear Amen. in these days, yes. in these times, yes. where we at right now in life. Yes. You got to have a certain confidence and a certain boldness that you that, that you have about yourself because it don't matter what's going on. Don't matter who's saying what. Don't matter, you know, what what this happening over here, what's happening over there. Man, I got supreme confidence in God. Yes. Man, I got supreme boldness to be able to walk out what God has put in me. Because because you cannot because there's many things going on now. They're trying to change the word of God. You know, they're trying to 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 se uh, separate, you know, the church even more than it's already separated. You know, we're trying to work on bringing it back together. There's so many things going on. They're trying to rewrite God's word. You know, they're trying to, you know, write it from a man's point of view. You know, not from a godly point of view, from a man's point of view. You know, they want to take out everything that offends everybody. I say, if you take out everything that offends everybody, you're not going to have nothing left. Because <laughs> there, there's going to always be something that offends somebody. So if you go try to take a Bible and make a Bible that you take out everything that's offensive to every single person, every single culture, every single creed, ain't nothing going to be left. So now, but they're trying to change God's word. They're trying to change it to make it fit certain lifestyles, certain, you know, certain, certain, cult. no, God's word is true. It's been here since the beginning. You know, it's going to be here when everything else leaves. Like God's word is going to always survive whatever's going on. So it doesn't matter what attack happens. God's word is what's going to survive. You know, from generation to generation, we still got God's word. Yes. Doesn't matter how many changeovers has happened, we still have God's word. Yes. So now God's word got to be the thing that we're holding on to, all right? So turn with me to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Let's look at verse 26. Say, from this day forward, from this day forward I have no more bad moments in my life. I you got no more, no more bad moments in your life. All the bad moments are gone. Because now I got to know that even if I find myself, you know, in a valley full of dry bones, I know that God got me here and it's not a bad moment for me to be here. Like this is the right moment if I'm in a wilderness. God has laid, he's led me in this wilderness because now it's time for him to get some more glory out of my life. Like there's no more moments in your life that you go deem as bad moments ever again. There's not, because you know, you, you have such a confidence, man. I know that God will never leave me or he'll never forsake me. So I know that where I am right now, ain't nothing bad happening to me. I don't care how unfortunate it may seem. I don't care, you know, how unfavorable it may be. No, it's only a matter of time for it to turn over to my favor. Because this is the confidence that I have. Look at verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. So not, not just any kind of confidence, but strong confidence. You know, it's a supernatural confidence that in, in the face of danger, you know, you stand there boldly like ain't nothing in front of you. 
Because I'm, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what I believe. And so now I believe that God is with me. So I know that I'm not in this valley by myself. Yea, though, they don't, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I know that he with me. If you don't have confidence that God is with you, when you're walking through these moments in life, you're going you're gonna to be fearful if you don't know who you got with you. If I don't know that I carry him everywhere that I go, I do not leave home without him. Wherever I go is where he is. So now when you, because you, you, there, there has to be a confidence to where even in the face of, you know, unfavorable circumstances, I don't care what the situation say. I don't have confidence in the situation. I don't have confidence in the system. I don't have confidence in man. I have confidence in God. So now, not just any kind of confidence, but strong confidence. Somebody say, I got strong confidence. It's not in the fear of the Lord. So now, I'm reverencing God. I'm respecting God. I'm, I'm honoring God. When everything seems to be hitting the fan, I got to make sure that my honor and respect for God is at an all-time high. If, if I never leave that position, I never got to return to that position. If you never leave, you know, where you are, if you never leave where God is, you never leave God's presence, like the fear of the Lord keep you in the presence of God. If you, if, 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 if you want to abide always in God's presence, you need to always be operating in the fear of the Lord. Because now in that place, I'm always, in, I'm, I'm always under shadow. Because I'm always, I'm always trusting and I'm always relying on him. If you find yourself not relying on God, then you, you're not going to have strong confidence. Because whatever confidence you may have in yourself, it's not going to be strong enough to be able to keep you when the boat starts rocking. When things start falling, you know, when things start collapsing, there's nothing going to be able to hold you but your trust in God. And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Somebody say strong confidence. So now, uh, and, and his children shall have a place of refuge. I'm, I'm abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Because I got strong confidence in God because I, I honor him. I respect him. I ain't going nowhere. If he ain't going, I ain't going. I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to wait until something changes, but I'm not moving ahead of him either. Because I got confidence in him too. So now I don't have to be in a hurry when I got confidence in God. Strong confidence. Weak, weak confidence, you might wait for a little while. You might wait for a little while and then don't nothing change and you might try to move and do something else because you're tired of waiting. No, I'll sit here and wait all day, God. If you need me to wait for the next 45 minutes, I'll wait for the next 45. I will wait because I know that you go come through. Amen. When you got strong, so now this uh, strong confidence, it requires a, 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 a divine boldness. So I know that this boldness is not a boldness that comes from me, but it's a boldness that comes from God. Amen. So when I, I'll go out there anywhere that he send me because I know that he got my back. Yes, so now look at, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse 5. Because in having strong confidence, you got to refuse to have weak confidence. You got to refuse to have weak confidence. No, I'm not going to have no weak confidence in God right now. I don't care what other Christians are even saying about what's going on. I'm going to have confidence in God because his word has come to me. So now when, God, so now when God's word comes to you, it's supposed to, it's supposed to embolden you and it's supposed to give you confidence. Come on, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So I don't care what everybody else is saying. I'm going to have confidence in God. No matter what, the tides are turning, looking, people turning that way, people going this way. I don't care which way they go. I don't care which way my family go. I don't care which way my coworkers go. I'm going to have faith in God. I'm going to have strong confidence. So I'm going to hold my post. So now that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Look at verse number 12. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 12. Oh, I'm going to have this confidence. I'm going to have this confidence. In whom we have boldness. They gotta have, you got to have a boldness. Because now in boldness, there has to be uh, a courage in you to where now, even in an unfavorable situation, the situation don't dictate to me my confidence. I don't care what's going on. I do not care. That's why, you know, you got to have one of those uh, three Hebrew boys confidence. So it don't matter if you throw me up in this fiery furnace, you can throw me in tied up. I know I won't be tied up for long. 
They threw them in there, tied up, but then they saw it. They saw them over there loose. Because it does, I'm not going to let the situation dictate to me where my confidence is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow my confidence to leave me, but no, I'm going to hold on to my confidence. And I'm going to have strong confidence. So now I know it's going to always cause the fourth man to show up. I'm not, I'm not worried. Say I'm not worried. I'm not worried what tomorrow bring. I'm not worried about what yesterday did. I'm not worried about what's going on today because I got strong confidence in God. Because you, you have to, you have to, your position got to be supernaturally trusting God at all times. At all times through every situation. Does not matter what comes my way. That's why, you know, we can look at examples in the scripture to show us what it looks like to have strong confidence. In, in the midst of, you know, being uh, nailed to the cross. You got to have strong confidence that you're going to get back up. That's why he says, not my will, but thy will be done. That's strong confidence. I can have weak confidence in my will, but in his will, I got strong confidence, man. Because I know that in, in my might, I'm not going to be able to follow through on this. But I know with him, he's going to empower me and encourage me to go forward. Get those two words down. Empower and encourage. Because now, there needs to be a divine flow of confidence that come to you tonight that, that, that encourages you and empowers you to be able to give God some more glory, man. Yes, to, where, to where you actually, you know, do things for the glory of God and it really leads you into the glory of God. Yes, to where you just always, you know, uh, resting in God's glory. Amen. In whom we have boldness and access. Because now when you know you got access, you can be bold about it. When you know you got a right to it, say, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I know I got a right to be here. I know that I have a right to, uh, to be able to, to determine how the situation will come out. Yes. I don't care if the boy up in there dead. You know what? All is well. All, all is well. I don't care what's going on. All is well. Because I got strong confidence in God. I don't care if the situation looks real bleak. I got strong confidence in God. I'm not even going to let nobody else talk different than what I believe. Because if you're going to talk like that, you can't be around me. I don't care how close you are or how close you was, you can't be around me. Because I have strong confidence in God and I can't allow nobody to shake my confidence. So now in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. So now I'm not even having this confidence by my own faith, but it's by faith in him. Go to, go, to, go to Galatians 2 real quick. Because when you got strong confidence, you're always living in the power of the resurrection, man. You're always living in the power of the resurrection. Because I know that I always got the ability to get up out of any situation. I don't care how, I don't care how down I've been or how long I've been down. I know I got the power to get up out of this situation. That's, man, it's a, it's a confidence. People be like, you know, well, what you going to do? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel sorry for myself because God don't feel sorry for me. You think Jesus feels sorry for you? No, he empathizes with you, but he don't sympathize for you. He, know, he, he can feel what you feel, but he don't feel sorry for what you're going through. Because he's already given you the power to overcome it. He's already overcome it already, so now... I'm, why should I feel sorry for you for what you're going through when I've already overcome it and I've given you the power to overcome the same thing? So now for you to be looking bad and down on yourself means that you're not looking at the author and finisher of your faith. You don't have strong confidence in him. For you to feel sorry for yourself means you don't have strong confidence in God. Because now I know that God is no respect of persons. So now I got I to gotta have strong confidence that I don't care where I am right now, I know he could do it for me. I know he could come through on my behalf. I know he could change things in a moment. So now I have that confidence. So now I don't let my faith get weary. I don't let my confidence get shake, man, because I know God is able to come through at any moment. Somebody say at any moment. You got to have strong confidence. To believe at any moment, something could change. Doesn't matter what's going on right now. I, come on. Give, give me the verse. Give me the verse. Give me the verse. Give me the verse. Galatians 2.20. Thank you, Lord. Say I'm living. In the power of his resurrection. So now you got to know you got crucifixion power and you got resurrection power. Because you can't get resurrection power without crucifixion power. So now I got to know that the crucifixion power is in me. And so now if the crucifixion power is in me, then the resurrection power is in me. The same power it is for me to lay it down, I got the same power to pick it up. That's why Jesus said you can't take my life. I'm giving it. Because now when I give it, I'm the one, I can, I can take it again. 
The spirit that's in me can raise me from the dead. So I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. So now I have the same evidence that Christ has. So now if he was able to go in the grave, if he was able to go in the sepulcher, if he was able to go in the tomb, whatever tomb, figurative tomb that you may be in, you able to come out of that thing. So now I don't need to have, you know, this confidence in myself. Man, I know I got it in him. So now, because how many of you know you can let yourself down? You've let yourself down many a times. If we all could be honest in here, we've let ourselves down many a times. But you know who's never let us down? Jesus has never let us down. Name me a time where Jesus let you down. And you can't. So now, because I do not like when people attest God not coming through for them when it's based on what they want. So not because you didn't get what you wanted, now God ain't come through for you. No, God came through for you because he did give you what you wanted. Because now I can't be in a relationship with somebody to only get what I want. So now, because God, he got to know that you're faithful. For God to know that he can trust you with something, he got to really put something in your hands and see how you go handle it. So now if you can't handle what you do have, that's why, you know, one of the one of the first things or the key thing that we get to in that 34th Psalm is you got to have a worship and a praise. Because even where I am right now, I got to know that I got to praise. Regardless of what may not be going the way that I think it's going should be going right now. I know that I got a praise. I have a praise within me so I can unleash this praise to God for everything that he's already done. Everything that he's going to do, everything that he's in the process of bringing into manifestation right now. So now there's a confidence that you have, man. So now there's no way you can have a confidence to praise God if you if you concerned about how something will turn out. You got to know how it's going to turn out. Say, I know how it's going to turn out. Look at your neighbor. And say, I know how this is going to turn out. You, you, you think Jesus didn't know how it was going to turn out? Through his whole life, through his whole ministry, he let him know how it's going to turn out. I'm going to destroy it, but then in three days. They said, how are you going to rebuild a temple in three days? It took us all these years to build a temple. How are you going to destroy it and rebuild it in three days? You don't even know what I'm talking about, but you're going to see it when I show up. Like, it's, it's, it's another level of confidence to where you can, you, can, you can give the play and do not be concerned about it coming to, coming to pass. So now Jesus could tell them what was going to happen. I'm going to destroy it, but I'm going to take it back in three days. I'm going to have to go and suffer many things, but you know what? The suffering won't be in vain. So now I know where I am right now, even though I may be, uh, you know, experiencing some pain, some discomfort, but I know it won't be in vain. I know that I'm coming through this situation way brighter and way cleaner than I entered into it. Because God's word, it cleanses you. So now it cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Anything that's having me in a way separate from him, outside of the way that he want to do it, it starts cleaning all that stuff out of me. So not even even wrong conduct or bad behavior, it gets wiped out, man, when when I'm able to abide in God's presence on a daily basis. Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Say, I'm crucified with Christ. That is the evidence that you got crucifixion power. That's why I say, take up your cross daily. I got the crucifixion on the inside of me. Come on, come on, hold your finger there. Turn to Ephesians, uh, Philippians chapter chapter three. Uh, I believe it's Philippians three ten. Go to verse nine. Go to verse nine. Go to verse eight. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. So now, because he talked about it, you know, you got to be content when you got nothing and when you got everything. No matter if I got it all or if I ain't got nothing to piss in right now, excuse my language, then I know that I, I got what I need. I know that I can still praise God right here where I am because what I have does not determine who I am. Who I have determines who I am. So now as long as I got him, 
then I know that I got everything that I need. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done. Ain't, no, ain't, ain't nothing but something to make me grow. That I may win Christ. That's what I want to get to in verse 8. That I may win Christ. Go to verse 9. And be found in him. That I may win him and be found in him. So now I'm always winning in life because I'm always found in him. I can't lose when I'm in him. It's in him I live, I move, and I have my being. So I cannot lose in him. So now, and be found in him. I'm, I'm found in him. I find myself in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So not my own righteousness, not your own righteousness, but his righteousness. Go to verse 10. That I may know him. What I, what, I, what I go through is only to position me to know him. So now it don't matter where you find yourself. It's only positioning you that you may know him. That's why he said, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everything that I'm experiencing in life is only to get me to know him. So the more I know him, the more I know me, the more I'm able to, to, to operate in discernment to know what that is, to where I can know how to move. So now the word of God is sharp. It, it, it keeps me on a cutting edge. When everybody else around me is dull, the word of God keeps me on the cutting edge. It keeps me in a place where now I'm always able to move with God because I'm always hearing his voice. My ear's not dull when I'm always sharp because I'm always feasting on the word. When you, because when you only feed on the word, you only feed on the word when you're hungry. When you need to, when you need to be fed, when you need to eat something. But when you don't need to eat nothing, what you doing? But when you're feasting, you're always eating. They got, oh, they got a part in here I want to get you to. Oh man, I got to get this to you. Hold on, where that, where that? Where I wrote that down. He told me that. I say, Lord, uh, feasting on the word fattens your anointing. Don't, don't let that slip, y'all. Don't let that slip. I ain't never heard that before in my life. He said, feasting on the word fattens your anointing. So you want more anointing, you need to do more feasting. So now there has to be a place that we operate in, man, to where now I'm not just feeding, but I'm feasting. Say, I'm not just feeding, I'm not just feeding but, I'm feasting. but I'm feasting. That I may know him and the power and the power and the power. Somebody say they got resurrection power. I have resurrection power that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Don't stop there. And the fellowship of his sufferings. So now I know that what I am going through, I, I got somebody that I can relate to. So now I know I'm not going through this by myself. He didn't already been. So now I know I can go to him and he could, he could walk me through this thing. He could, he could tell me how to keep my eyes on the joy. So even while you're going through this suffering, keep looking at the joy. Because you, you know how it's going to turn out. So now go to Hebrews 12, 2 right quick. Go to verse 1. Go to verse 1. Be made conformable unto his death. Go to verse 1. Hebrews 12, 1. I'm feeling good tonight if y'all didn't know this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. That's everything that's preventing us from knowing him. That's everything that does not align itself with who the word says that I am. So now everything that does not align with God's word, got to cast it aside. Got to gotta, gotta lay it aside because it's, it's a weight. It's keeping me from going into the thing that God really has designed for me to walk in. Let us lay aside every weight, every weight. Not just the weights that you want to lay aside. Lay aside every weight. Not just the stuff that you think are weights. Let God show you what is really the weight that's, that you carry. Because there's, there's some stuff that you carry that you don't even know that you're carrying it because you've been carrying it so long. So you need somebody that's outside of yourself to show you what you're carrying. You know, that's oftentimes we see there's other people see stuff on us that we don't see in ourselves. Like there's a, there's a, there's a statement that, you know, when you, when you stink so long, you don't know that you stink. Because you, come used, you become used to the smell. You need somebody that's outside of you to be like, yo. 
what's going on here? So now, sometimes we carry stuff so long to where we become immune to it in the sense of we, we, we become numb to it. We don't see it no more. So now you need God to show you, man, you think that that's something that, you know, is your cross, but it's really a weight. It's not for you to bear because, you know, you have to know what your cross is. That's why some stuff you carry, you think you're carrying a cross. You think it's a, a cause that God has caused for you to carry, but it's not something that's a weight that you're carrying. So now I need to let him show me, let the, let the Holy Ghost show me, man, that's a weight. Let that weight go. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin because he told me that all of the schemas in your life are being exposed. So they got, they got some people that are scheming in your life right now that are being exposed, and that's a weight that you go, that you go lose. Because ain't nothing like losing dead weight. Weight that's not producing nothing, that's not giving nothing, that's not, you know, contributing nothing. It's just that taking up space. You know, it's, it's, it's causing you to slowly go forward. No, you got, you, got, you got to really make them like Jonah. Just throw them overboard, man. Lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Get that word patience right there. Because I want you to get patience and I want you to get race. Because, you know, it's, it's almost like the, the, what it is, the tortoise uh, and the hare. I don't have to be in a hurry when I know that I'm going to the finish line. I'm going to win anyway. So now you can have people, you know, going by you and this all that. But you know what? I know God taking me somewhere. So, it, you know, it, it may not be, it may not look how they look, but I know that I, I'm going somewhere, so I know I can be patient here. I got confidence. I got confidence. I got strong confidence. So now, there's no way for you to run with patience. How you run with patience? Without strong confidence. Because now, like, to run literally means, like, there's some urgency behind it. But now the urgency doesn't get me sped up because I'm patient to know that he's faithful and true to always keep the word that he gives to me. So now if he gave me the word, man, I got strong confidence in God's word. That's why we got to keep feasting on his word. Every, 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 every logos and every rhema, every written word and every spoken word, I got to be feasting on it. Constantly meditating that word. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You can only run the one that's before you. You can't run nobody else's race. Go to verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Get that word down, finisher. Because now, finisher means I know how it's coming out. John 1930. It is, I know how it's going to turn out. I already know how it's coming out. I don't have to wonder how this is going to come out. I don't have to say, man, what's going to happen next? I already know what's going to happen next. I know how to bow my knees. I know how to go to, go to, go to, go to, go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews 4. Let me, let me finish reading this verse while y'all going there. Hebrews 4, 16. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There's always joy set before you. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Get that word down there, set. It's set. Set. That means it's set. That means it can't be moved. It's an unmovable kingdom. It's an unshakable kingdom. It's not going to be. Once it's set, it cannot be moved again. So now he's set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He in the seated position. So now you got to know that the seated position is in you. Come on, give me Hebrews 4.16. Let us, let us, let, let, let us with strong confidence. Let us with supernatural boldness. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. There's no way to boldly come to the throne of grace without strong confidence. Because the only reason you're going there boldly is because you know you're leading with something. If I'm going before the throne of grace, God is going to give me some grace and he's going to give me some mercy. That let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. I got strong confidence that no matter what situation I'm in, I can always come bow at that throne. Because I know that and when I bow at that throne, God is going to give me more mercy and he'll give me more grace. So now even in, that's why there always has to be a cause for you to bow. Every situation is a reason for me to bow. I don't care if this situation is going good right now or if it's not going so good. I'm still going to bow. 
it could be going in my favor, because that's what we're missing sometimes, where stuff could be going in our favor, and then we just start getting in the rigmarole, we just going through the motions, and forget where we came from. We got to always know how to bow. I, 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 bow, I bow when it ain't good. I bow when it is good. I'm bowing when it's all good. I'm always bowing. You got to always be bowing at that throne. Because I'm leaving with something. And not just me. He go, he, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. I told you, I'm, I'm leaving with something. Every day of my life, I'm leaving with something. I'm never going into a day and leaving out of a day with less than I came in with. I'm leaving with something. There's always going to be increase every day of my life. Say there's always going to be increase every day of my life. There's never going, I'm never going to end the day in the deficit. I'm never going to end the day, you know, uh, to where I'm not attaining all that God has for me in this day. Whatever he wanted me to learn today, I'm going to learn it. Whatever he wanted me to accomplish today, I'm going to accomplish it. I'm not going to be blocked out from good success. I'm not, say success, success is mine. So now let us therefore come bold. You got to have strong confidence to have success. Because yes. what, what did it say in Joshua 1 8? This book of the law shall not. Like, you have to have confidence to keep saying the same thing, yes. to keep meditating the same thing. Yes. Well, you know what? Well, you've been saying that for a long time. Like, yeah, I have, and I'm going to keep saying it. Yes. Um, there's not going to be a day that goes by to where I stop saying it. Yes. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain, that we may, you go so you can get. Amen. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, man, there's no way for you to go to the throne and come back the same way you went. God wouldn't be God. It wouldn't be a throne if it happened that way. So now it being a throne, he has to release something when you come to him. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 11, all you that labor in a heavy laden, come to me. Because now once you come, there's something that you're going to find. There's something that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give it to you, but you're going to have to find it and take it yourself, but it's yours. Yes, yes. But everybody don't want to go to that throne. Come on. Say the throne is mine to go to. The throne is mine to receive from. Remember, I got, I got, I got access. I got so I got, I got confidence. I got, confidence. I got boldness. I got that I can go to that throne. And I can receive, and I can receive mercy, mercy and grace, and grace every, time. every time. There's not a time you, can't, you can go and not receive. There's no time you can go to the throne and not receive. So now if I know that every, so now why should I just pray once in a day? I ought to be going to that throne all throughout the day because I'm always receiving more mercy and more grace. I'm always being empowered to do this thing even more so when I go to that throne. Yes. So now, anything that God uh, wants to deliver to you, it got to be found at that throne, man. It's in the throne room. Come on, give me, give me, give me that verse again. And then go back to Galatians. Be seated, be seated. Y'all getting me worked up. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. And then it says, and find grace to help in time of need. Because remember, Matthew 6, he says, he already knows what you have need of. So now I got to know that I, when I'm in a moment of need, I got to know that right now I need to be at the throne. I need to receive some more mercy and some more grace now. So now, even though I may be doing something that God told me to do, but now, you know, it's, 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 it's getting, a little, uh, getting, getting a little heavy on me. So now I got to go to that throne. I got to lay aside every weight, and I got to get more grace. I, I got I to gotta get more empowerment to do what I'm not able to do on my own. So, come on, go back to Galatians 2 real quick. I am, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. He loved me. So now I'm not even living this life by my faith, but I'm living it by his faith. So now what faith does the Son of God has that I can go through with this cross and come back alive, that I can defeat death, 
that I could take the whippings, the lashings, I could take the stripes, I could take the piercing, I could take the ridicule, I could take the thorns, I could take it all, and yet I'm still going to rise in glory. That's strong confidence. So now you don't find yourself in no position where somebody is putting a thorny crown on your head or piercing you in your side. And, 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 and really ridiculing you to the extent to where it's just trying to demean you as a human being. But now I'm greater than just a human being. That's why I say despising the shame. I, you could try to shame my humanness all you want, but I'm a divine creature. I'm a divine creation. I'm a, I'm a partaker of his, of his divine nature. So now I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but this divine nature in me is what's living. This, this, this crucifixion power in me is what I'm releasing. This resurrection power in me is what I'm releasing. But Christ liveth in me. So now he's not dead. So now there has to be some, some stuff that, that rises up in you. There, there has to be some life that rises up in you. I, 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 I got to know that I have the ability to get up. That's why we see in all these situations in the, in the, in the gospels when God, uh, uh, Jesus be in a position He'll speak to him. He say, "Take up your bed and walk." That the same thing that's in me is in you. Yeah. So now, when I speak my word to you, that that word cannot return to me void. That word is gonna be the thing that really fuels the resurrection power that's on the inside of you. Yeah. That's why he says, "I am the I am the resurrection and I am the life." Yeah. So now I'm not just gonna get you up, but I'm gonna show you how to live once you get up. That's why he had to walk around 40 days to show us. And it's not just, you know, you just get up and then, you know, oh, man, I got up. No, now you got to walk this thing out. Yeah. Now you got to walk out your victory. Now you got to walk out your, 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 your forgiveness. Whatever it is, I got to walk it out. So now it's not enough for me just forgive you today. No, I got to walk out this forgiveness now. Because now if I don't, I'm just like everybody else. But no, Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What greater love than this in a man will lay down his life for his friends. So he called us friends. Go to verse 21. I won't take you somewhere. I do not frustrate, glory to God, the grace of God. So now I'm, I'm not frustrating the grace because I'm always going to the throne and getting more grace. Because I know I'm, I'm, I'm not going to rely on the last grace I got. I'm going to keep getting more grace. You say, well, Pastor, you know, God graced me for this. Go get some more. He, he, ain't, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't, he is not strapped for grace. Well, you know, I'm going to let tight this, this week now. I ain't going to be, no, God got more grace to give you, man. So now where I am, I'm going to get all the grace he got for me. So now it's a frustration of the grace when we don't know that we have access to get more grace. We're trying to work something from a, from, from a form of grace. But now, I know I want a fresh grace today. God, grace me today to be able to follow your word today. Follow your word. God, I need a, I need a fresh grace. If, I'm, if I need a fresh anointing, I need a fresh grace. I need some fresh mercy too. I need something. I need some help, man. My body needs some help. I be, I be, I be, I be putting some stuff on my body. My body needs help. Because, you know, because this, this, this confidence and this boldness you got to wear and you got to be determined to wear it. Uh, and this the, this, 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 the, this, the, this the context that, that came to me when I was uh, praying. It's uh, if you ever been in a position to where, you know, you needed somebody to help you get dressed. Mm-hmm. Or you ever been in a position to where there was a stain on something you wanted to wear, but you was going to find a way to still wear it. Mm-hmm. You determined to wear it. You know, I've had some times where, you know, I couldn't latch my own shoes, so I had to get dressed to a certain point to let somebody else latch them for me because things had gotten a little bit too tight. But I was determined, I'm wearing this suit today. There has to be a determination. You know, there's times where there's stuff that it takes you, you know, a good 10 minutes to put on, but you're determined, I'm going to wear this. Man, I got a stain on this shirt. Hold on, I'm going to just put a jacket over it to cover up the stain. They ain't going to never see it because I'm determined to wear this thing. This confidence and this boldness, they have to have a certain determination to wear it. I don't care what today is. I don't care, I don't care what's going on. I'm going to wear this confidence. I'm going to trust in God every step of the way. 
It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. Y'all cameras got to keep up with me because I'm moving a lot. Give me Hebrews chapter 4. Oh, give me, give me Hebrews chapter 10. Give me Hebrews 10, verse, verse 35, because I got to find a place to jump off here soon. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. So now, if, I, if I'm able to hold on to this confidence, if I'm able to be strong in this confidence, then I'm going to have the reward for holding on to this thing. Look at, look at the next verse, verse, verse 36. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So now, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Somebody say quickly. So now I got to know that me holding on to this confidence, it ignites the quickly in my life. It ignites things to happen quickly on my behalf. Yeah. So now it doesn't, because now I'm, let's go to a verse real quick, because I don't want you to get this hooked up with timeline. Go to, go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40, 31. I don't want you to get this hooked up with timeline. I don't want you to get this hooked up with a clock. Because God is greater than a clock and your timeline. But you got to know how to wait. Look at verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Because you know what? It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit says the Lord. So Lord, I ain't got no might. Increase my strength. Give me more grace. Give me more mercy. Give me more power. Give me more resurrection power. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. That'll preach right there. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint so now let me give you what the first three definitions of weight are uh in the uh strong's concordance let's see i got it written down here somewhere To, to bind together. So now when you wait, they that wait upon the Lord, they that bound themselves together with the Lord. We, we about to crush the timeline. We about to crush the time clock. So now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bound to a certain timeline or time frame that is happening. Well, those that wait, well, I'm just going to sit here and wait. I ain't going to do nothing, but I'm just wait. I don't care if years go by, I'm just going to wait. No, it ain't, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about binding together. Yeah. Remember, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. So that means to bind together. Second definition, to collect. Collect. So now, they that wait upon the Lord, they, they binding together with God. Because now the, the third one, the third one, before we even get to, to anything else, is to bind together, to collect, and then it says to expect. So now I cannot expect and not collect. I wish somebody let me preach up here tonight, man. So now, but, it, it, but, it, but it's not this clock thing. That's why this, I, I, I wear my watch on my wrist, but I wear it upside down. Because I don't need to tell what time it is by this. I don't want to be in the mood of looking at what time is it. I don't, I don't want to know. 
Because it's not about the time. It's not about the clock. I might say, Pastor, you wear your watch upside down? I absolutely do. <laughs> the dial to spin is on this side. Because I don't, I don't care about it. It's just, it's just something that looks good. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not relying on it to tell me where I am. So now, they that wait upon the Lord. They that no matter what's going on, I'm going to bind myself together with the Lord. I don't care who come and who go, I'm going to bind myself together with the Lord. I don't care what's going on, I'm going to bind myself together with the Lord. So now when I bind myself together, I'm expecting. My expectations don't come from him, don't come from her, don't come from them. It come from him. So now when I bind myself together with him, I'm expecting from him. So now, because now Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. And you're going to find rest for your souls. So now you cannot bind yourself to Jesus. You cannot bind yourself to the Lord and be in the same position as you was before you bound yourself. So now if I'm binding myself, I'm taking up his yoke, I'm expecting rest. I'm expecting light. And I'm expecting easy. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. So now if I'm expecting it, if I'm binding myself together, if I'm expecting it, it's time to collect. Yes. So now I'm not going to be somewhere else when it's time to collect. That's right. When it's time for me to receive, yes. I'm going to be right next to the one, right with the one that I'm bound to. Yes. That's why Apostle Paul said, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ yes. because I'm bound to him. So now if I'm bound to him, I'm expecting from him and I'm, I'm going to collect from him. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Go to Acts real quick. Go to Acts. 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 God, dog, go to Acts. I'm expecting. Somebody say, I'm expecting from him. I'm expecting from him. Look at Acts 16. Look at, look at, look at verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. So now I know that no matter where I'm bound, I'm bound to him. Yes. No matter if it seems like I'm stuck in a place, I'm stuck with him. Yes. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a saying like, you stuck with me. Yes. I don't care if y'all wanted to vote for another pastor, you couldn't vote for another, you're stuck with me. <laughs> I don't care if some days you don't like me, some days you do, you're stuck with me. Yes. We stuck together, you're stuck with me. So now, you know, they got this saying, I'm stuck like Chuck. You're stuck like Chuck, man. You just, but, but now when I bind myself together with God, I'm stuck with him. So now when I'm stuck with him, I'm not going nowhere else. So now I'm not leaning on no other understanding. I'm not leaning on no other wisdom. I'm not leaning on no other strategies. I'm leaning on him. Because I'm, I'm, I'm bound together with him. So now I can have... Like, you have to have some kind of crazy, strong confidence to why you are in prison to still pray and sing praises. Yes. Come on, hold your finger there. Come on, let's go to 1 John 5 right quick. I'm preaching like a wild man. Because I'm wild and I'm free. Because he whom the Son sets free, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Come on, look at 1 John 5. Look at verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Because now I know that my prayers are going to change everything around me. So it doesn't matter if I am in prison, my prayer is going to change everything around me. And this is the confidence that we have in him. So now I'm not going to let my confidence be laid to the side. I'm going to hold on to my confidence. I know it got great recompense of reward. Me holding on to my trust in God is going to show bring me a reward. Somebody say it's collection time. You got to be like they all like did in the, in the old church. You know, just start shaking the collection plate down the, down the aisle. You ought to start going back to so many things in your life and start saying it's time to collect. Every, woo, every situation man I don't care if it ain't been working out I don't care what it's been looking like it's time to collect it's, it's time for you to give up what you've been holding on to there, there's something that God's been holding up for me so now it's time for me to collect man God got me in this situation and so now I'm not going to I receive you see I'm not going to stay here not expecting to receive here there's 
there's no way you could be in prison and not be expecting to receive something to happen in prison. I don't need nothing to happen when I get out of here. I need something to happen while I'm in here. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask, and if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So not, not my will, but your will be done. I know that I, I know that God hears me. I know that heaven hears me. So I know that my prayer is not in vain. How much confidence you got in prayer? Do you have confidence that if you pray on a thing, that something is going to change? Because your confidence is supposed to be in your prayer. Not in somebody else praying for you. Your prayer. I'm not going to trust somebody else's prayer greater than my own prayer. Because that means that I'm trusting somebody else can contact heaven more than I can contact heaven. No, because I know he hear me. Go to verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, it's time to start asking. It's time to start collecting. It's time to start expecting. So now I'm not going to be one if you have not because you ask not. So now, why are you, why are you in this situation? Because you ain't asked God for no revelation. You hadn't asked God for no insight. You hadn't asked God for no instructions. You hadn't asked God to show you why you in here. Show God how we getting out of this thing. God, I done got myself into a pickle. I done got myself into a jam. Lord, how are we going to get out of this thing? I'm sorry that I did it. I went and I did some stuff that you ain't tell me to do. I repent, God, I'm sorry. But I come to you humbly. I come to you boldly. To this throne to obtain mercy and grace to help me in my time of need. How are we going to get out of this thing? And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now go back to Acts 16, verse 26. So now how can I be in prison and still pray and praise? Because I know that he hit me. So I know if he hit me, I know it's time for some stuff to come unloose. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Oh, Lord. Even if there got to be an earthquake, God will shake up what needs to be shaken up. There's going to be earthquakes in the land. There's going to be earthquakes in your land. But whatever earthquakes come is not to shake you up. It's to shake up everything around you. It's, it's, it's to shake up all of the wealth that's been laying up to get it to start moving in your direction. Say the wealth, the wealth is running in my direction now. It ain't laid up no more. It's moving. It's moving, man. It's moving. It's moving right now. And so, suddenly. That means once you pray, it don't take long. Because God not deaf. He ain't hard of hearing. He ain't got a voicemail. He hear you when you say it. So now, and suddenly, somebody say, I got, I, got, I got confidence. I got strong confidence in suddenly. I got strong confidence in suddenly. Say, I got strong confidence in quickly. I got strong confidence in quickly. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. Yeah. So that the foundations of the place that we are in were shaken. So wherever I find myself, I know that prayer and praise could shake it from its foundations. So it don't matter if things look like it hasn't changed on the outside yet. The foundations are shaking. The, the, the very core that it's being rooted in is being broken up. So now the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately, suddenly and immediately, all the doors were open. All the, every door is open for you. <laughs> no more locked doors. Every door is open to you. And every band is loose. Immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Not 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 give me give me Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Because strong confidence it, it, you walk in knowing that there's nothing too hard for God. That I don't care what's going on. Ain't got nothing too hard for God. If, if God could get them out of the prison, if God could get the Hebrew boys out of the fire, if he could go in the fire with them, if he could loose them while they went in there with bands on, they went in there tied up. 
So just like Paul and Silas, the three Hebrew boys, they was bound, but then the bands was loosed. They was up in there dancing around, praising God, because we in this fire, but ain't nothing burning. I don't even feel a heat. There's no smoke smell in my clothes. Like, you have strong confidence in God to know that no matter where I am, he, it's not, it's not too hard for him. He could deliver, he could deliver me out of it. It's not too hard for him. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out on. And there is nothing. Somebody say it with me. There is nothing. Say, God, there is nothing too hard for you. So now what does that mean? My situation that I'm experiencing right now is not too hard for God. If anything, I heard a man say, it's just right. It's just right for God. What's your situation? It's just right for God. All you got to do is put it in his hands. Say, you know what, God? This is your situation. Do with it what you want to do with it. Move how you want to move. Shake what you need to shake. Say what you need to say. But I'm here for you to get the glory. This is this situation, it belongs to you. If I'm going to give him the glory, I'm going to give him every situation in order for him to get the glory in it. So now whatever situation I find myself in, Lord, this is your situation. Lord, this your, is this your predicament. Lord, this is your difficulty because I know it ain't difficult. It ain't too difficult for you. Sometimes, go to Ezekiel real quick. Sometimes you don't know how, how, how it's going to turn out in the sense of, you know, what you're capable of. But you know what? You know what God capable of. So now I, don't, I have strong confidence in him. Go to Ezekiel 37 verse 1 for a minute. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Say the hand of the Lord is on me. The hand of the Lord is on me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. So now, so now the hand of the Lord being on you, he will always carry you in his spirit. And set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Lord, why you got me here? In this valley that's full of these bones. I need something to happen in my life right now, God. I, I, I don't need to be in this place. I need to be somewhere different. Why are you leading me here? Go to verse 2. And caused me to pass by them round about. So he led me there. He carried me there. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. They was dead. With no life. Go to verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man. Or he said unto me, Doris. He said unto me, Regina. He said unto me, he, he said unto me can these bones live? And I answered, Oh Lord God, thou knowest. I don't know why you got me here, but I know if you got me here, you got me here for a good reason. So I know that you got many plans for me, plans to prosper me, plans not to destroy me or bring me to destruction, but to bring me hope and a future. So now, if anybody knows if these bones can live, you know. So let me know what you know. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So now if I know that Jesus can come out of that tomb, if he can come out of that sepulcher, then I know that these bones can live. So whatever bones you find yourself in your life, man, you know that these bones too can live. Come on, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me verse four. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So now you're not just hearing my word, you're hearing God's word. You, so now I got to be feasting on his word. The more I feast on his word, the more his word come to me. The more revelation I get on his word, the more, the more uh, spoken word that comes in my life for me to speak. So now you, you have superior speaking. You gonna be Situations will be down here, but you're going to be speaking from a way superior point of view. So now I prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So now, you know, he, he spoke to the bones and then the bones, you know, he told them to speak to the wind. The wind came and he, he had his army. Yes, he did. I say he had his army. Yeah. Come on, turn me to Daniel real quick. I thought we better get by without going to this den, but I got to go to this den. 
And I want to I want to give you this verse as well. It's Proverbs chapter 15, verse 23. I want to connect this with Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And, you know, one translation says there's great joy in having the right answer. A man had joy by the answer of his mouth. Can these dry bones live? Lord, thou knowest. And the word spoken in due season, how good is it? Man, how, how sweet it is to be loved by Jesus, man. How sweet it is. How sweet it is. No, in every situation, you know how it's going to come out. That's why he told you to prophesy. That lady, she say, all is well. Right at home, it don't look well. But you know what? It is well. Because I'm going to say how it's going to turn out. Come on, give me Daniel chapter 6. Give me Daniel 6. Daniel 6. Um, give me verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. And I'm going to do this in the open. He kneeled upon his knees. I ain't hiding. Because now we, you got to have strong confidence. I don't care what the system, what, what situation is trying to tell you to do. I got strong confidence in God. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm not bowing and worshiping no other person, no other being, no other spirit, but my father, but Yahweh, but Elohim. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he knew that, you know, it came to the point where if you serve or praise any other God, you know, you're going to be dealt with. Okay, it's done, not signed. Let me go handle my business. So I'm, I'm, I'm not scared. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now I know who I am, so can't nothing, can't nothing bluff me because I walk in strong confidence. I walk in supernatural boldness. He went into his house, and his window was being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed because I know where God go hit me and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. He ain't just doing it now. He's been doing this. Go to, go to verse 16. He's been doing it. So now I ain't going to let something make me do something different. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Yep, yep, yep. Go to verse 17. And... A stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet. And with his, it was the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Now he locked him in that den. Go to verse 18. Look at your neighbor and say, den don't scare me. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the dinner line. Why you, why you, what you in a hurry for? What you worry about? Go to verse 20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? They don't think you're going to respond. But that's why you always got to have the right answer in your mouth. Jesus always had the right answer. Even when they was trying to trip him up, he knew the right thing to say so when they ain't asking nothing ever again. You got to always, I know, have faith in God. I, Lord, I don't know, but you know. Daniel, servant of living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Let's see. Verse 21. Then said Daniel, so that means Daniel survived the night. We can end the story right there. Because the fact that Daniel had anything to say means that the Lord delivered him. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. Verse 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. 
I ain't did you nothing. Verse 23. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed, because he believed, because he believed. I don't care about Buddha. I don't care about all these. Because he believed in his God. So now I, I, I got to know that God is able, man. Amen. So now strong confidence. Go to Romans 8 for me right quick. Go to Romans 8, 28. You got to have strong confidence that you're more than a conqueror. Amen. Rome, go, go to Romans 8, 28. And we know. I know how it's going to turn out. And we know. I got strong confidence. No matter what it looks like right now, I know that it's going to turn out for my good. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. And get this one down. Uh, go, get, go to Ephesians 10. It's down. With every attack, you send Satan back. With every attack, you send Satan back. He's, he, you send him back with his tail tucked between his legs because he know that he, he failed again. The same way he failed with Jesus on the cross, he failed every time he tried you. Oh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So you got to have strong confidence in the Lord. That, that, that there has to be strong confidence that no matter where I am, what I'm going through, that God is on my side. I, my, my place and my position is to trust him always in all things in every situation. Because in every situation, I got the ability to come up out of this thing. Because I got crucifixion power and I got resurrection power. And glory to God. Get this down. Loyal love and endless mercy is always available to me. Loyal love and endless mercy is always available to me. And I guess I'll give you some more of this on Sunday in part three. <laughs> Look at today, but say, I got confidence. I got, confidence. I got strong confidence. I got, confidence. I got supernatural confidence. I got spiritual confidence. I got stable confidence. I'm wearing supernatural boldness. My father, my, father my, God, my God, is encouraging me, is encouraging me as an empowering me, empowering me right, now, right now to go forth, to go forth in, his glory, in his glory and bring him glory, bring him glory for, the kingdom. for the kingdom. Give God a hand of praise. Glory to God, man. Glory to God.